Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Blessings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My brother, Brother Cho Madhu and myself, we are glad to bring the word of God. And we are happy to experience the ways and the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ each passing day by coming on live to listen to his word. Thanking our Lord for this uh, wonderful channels that he has granted us all to experience and speak about his love. Shall we pray? Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for granting us this opportunity to meditate upon your word. Thank you, Lord, when we plead thee that you are ready to forgive all our known and unknown sins. Through the precious name of your beloved Son, our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are strengthened, Lord, every second with thy divine presence. Thank you for the way of you are leading us, lifting us up, upholding us, and granting us the grace to see you more clearly. Thank you for listening to our prayers. And thank you for accepting each and every one of us as your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, prayerfully, brother and myself, we have uh, brought this title before you. For God, everything is possible. So, dear ones, as we very well know, with our God, that everything is possible. And uh, we need to realize and confess and speak of our faith and say to the Lord that we love him and we believe that all that he does is always miraculous, beautiful. And in his own time, he does everything wonderful in his own time. Let us turn our Holy Bible to the book of Genesis. We know very clearly a God, living Lord Jehovah, appeared unto his beloved servant Abraham in chapter 18 and how it is in connection with Sodom and Gomorrah. But God came all the way to visit his servant Abraham. And we find in this chapter, a God is speaking in a very personal way with Sarah, the wife of Abraham. We know very well that Abraham and Sarah were childless. They're already old and there is no possibility for them to have any child. But here God always promised Abraham saying that he would grant him a child through his wife Sarah. My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, here in this chapter 18, we find how beautifully God himself speaks in a very, very personal way with Sarah. And he says, you're going to be blessed with a son. She couldn't bear this. Or oh, let me say, the age always stands as a hindrance. And she just laughs within herself, saying, Though it happens, but people would make fun of me. And how could this be? My brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you very well know about the power of God and his anointing, a very obedient lady, who just followed her husband blindly when God spake to Abraham, saying, Get out of this land and to walk up to the land which I'm going to show you, Abraham. My brothers and sisters, even your life is always a challenge. Sometimes the impossible situation stands to rise up as a big question to you, say, how is this possible? Because I'm not fit for this or I'm useless. Or how could this be? Very well, believing and accepting what God speaks. But the human mind, the human situations and the surroundings makes you feel so insecure or unable to digest the fact that how it would be 
before the society or the people. Same way even with Sarah. She believes God's word. But her old age is starting to be a big block. Thinking about the society, the people around her, and even about her age. God is very clear. If he speaks a promise to you in your life and he wants you to inherit it, no power on the earth can stop it, my brothers and sisters. Now, in context to this, we look into verse 14. God is speaking to Sarah very clearly. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah shall have a son. Thank you, Lord. This is a very crystal clear promise God has given to Sarah. Let us go into the Eba verses. Even God said this. Let us read from verse 11. You will have a clear understanding. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and dull stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, After I am waxed old shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? As I very well told you earlier. Well, now in verse 13, we find she's just unable to accept the fact. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which I'm old, when I'm old? And now as I pointed out the verse 14 before you, that is a verse we are looking into now. And the Lord said unto Abraham, the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Then God says to Abraham, Is anything too hard for the Lord? It's a question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? He is the creator. He is the healer of our lives. Even your bitter moments will turn to be a time of thanksgiving, my dear ones, in Christ. When you have the Lord with you in your life, in the midst of a pain and agony, when God's judgment is going to be carried into Saddam, God is speaking of various blessings which are going to happen in the family of Abraham and his wife and the future which God wants to open out. God's plans are eternal. We only have a short vision. We only view it till a certain distance. But when we see through the eyes of Jesus, we see the great future. Your bitterness now, what you're carrying, what has happened in the past, you lost someone, you lost something. When you remember about that, your heart aches. And you feel about it because it's something uh, which is not bad, but it is something which is a healthy one. And you lost that healthy moment. But when you have the Lord Jesus in your life, the greatest consolation you receive is amazing. And the Lord speaks very clear and he says, look up unto heaven. There is something that which I have set for you. So this world is not something which is eternal. We are travelers. We are sojourners. We travel and are, and are travelers towards heaven. And we would indeed be with the Lord forever, seeing all our dear ones. So what you've lost, what the, what the blessed uh, people you've lost, the blessed moments you lost, what are they? And it is a big question before you. But those are the times even when you don't receive an answer, when you have the Lord, you know what you do? It's my Lord's will and I just hand it over to him. Various arising questions. But those are the times when God speaks to you saying, is anything too hard for the Lord? I'm the one who's consoled you. I'm the one who's leading you. It's my will. It's my plan. Just stop worrying. Wait at my feet. 
wait before me in my presence. Have the heart to understand and carry on, says the voice of God. When the Lord says, it is done. At the time appointed, I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Praise God. In Job 42nd chapter, verse 1 onwards, 42. Let us read the first three verses. Till 41st chapter, Job was, of course, he's always righteous and he wants to be good in the sight of God and tried his level best to make God happy and keeping himself right before God. But the situations have prompted him to speak various uh, words. But when God begins to appear in 42nd chapter of Job, the whole life of Job changed. Here we find, then Job answered the Lord and said, see the reply of Job in verse 2, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from you, O Lord. He's speaking unto the Lord for all that which happened till 41. And now he communicates with God and says to him, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from you. Third verse. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, have I uttered that I understood not? See the way how he repents and asks God for forgiveness. Therefore, have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. God is always an amazing God. He understands our heart. When we plead in his presence, he's ready to forgive us and accept us as his own. Please turn. The Holy Bible, the meditation also to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, the very chapter, Genesis 18, chapter, verse 14, the beginning of words which we read, which God speaks, is anything too hard for the Lord? Turn to Matthew 19, 26. The Lord Jesus Christ, he uses the word here. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Look at the title we have brought before you. For God, everything is possible. He is an amazing Lord. Even in the midst of all your turns and ups and downs, when you have the Lord with you, he guides you safely through. He cross and he will. Place your feet on solid ground. Dear ones, let us read that 26th verse again. The last part. With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I want you to also turn your Holy Bible to the book of Jeremiah. 32nd chapter of Jeremiah. 32nd chapter, verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. What a beautiful prayer. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. 27th verse. Behold, the Lord is saying, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? This is a question our Lord has raised to his people. 27th verse. To the disobedient, to the obedient, is there anything too hard for me? Nothing is hard for the Lord. Everything is possible with him. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is hard for the Lord. Also in 1926, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Do you accept this and let us all together say Amen. He knows your heart. He knows your cry. He knows your pain. He knows your burden. He knows what you are crying for. The Lord knows your agony. The Lord knows your pain, your trials. All that you are crossing through and the challenges you face. It's time that we seek his holy presence and pray.
Are you ready to say, confessing your faith, being washed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Lord, I agree. Even in my pain, even in my loss, even in all that, those trials I'm crossing through, I'm ready and prepared to say, Lord, everything is possible. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come to your presence. We plead in your presence. We ask of thee that you would set everything right and beautiful, my God, in your own time. You're the Lord of all ages. Lord, and we come running to you with our outstretched arm. Thank you, Lord, for you are the one who speaks right and that which is right and good for us. Thank you, Lord. As you speak, you visited Sarah. You blessed her womb. And you bless them as you promised a son and whom you have named as Isaac. Thank you, Lord. Even in dishonor, you always lift up your children's head. When they are, when they have lost something and then they are all alone, crying within themselves, you have opened out so many out there who are around them. When they see them, they get content and they are consoled. They are comforted and we believe that all that which you bring is right. And we humble ourselves and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. For with God, everything is possible. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, Brother Joe and myself, we'll be glad to bring the word of God tomorrow night. As you subscribe and uh, receive the notifications and also the likes you send, see that you prayerfully forward to all your people across and that they also would be blessed. Praise God and God bless you.